there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. You know, when you take some of the biggest brain power you have in the industry with that history and match that with some really sexy industrial design and you put it together, you're probably going to see and learn about it all today. Today, we're talking about Exile Audio in the Marine category. Hey, it's distributed by Trans Electronics. We've got Bill Hasbrook, um, one of the lead guys and, and people behind the brand that have found so much success in marine audio. And uh, we're going to learn about that today. Stay till the end because we've got some new product to announce as well. This is CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM Exile Marine Audio. This episode, it starts now. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and we are continuing on the path that we set forth through our journey of marine audio brands. It is the marine audio sessions going straight through until um, April 6th. So today we're going to be focusing on another major player in the game, and that is, of course, Exile Audio. It's a brand that has been pretty consistent in the marine audio business, very popular, uh, especially with their towers. Um, they're great design and, and really a good value for what you're getting. And uh, today we're going to here to talk to not only the man behind the brand, but also the Canadian distributor, which is Trends Electronics. So first off, I'd like to invite my good friend, Grant McFadder, who is the National Sales Manager for Trends. Ben Wu, my Grant brother McFadden. from another mother. How are you? Good, buddy. How you doing? Uh, we are, you know, this entire marine audio sessions, obviously Trends is taking a big part of this. You guys are pretty heavy in that category. And uh, this brand is no exception. Yeah, a little bit in the marine category. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been very happy to get the XL brand back uh, for coming up on two years, I think. Maybe, maybe not quite, but. Um, you know, we started off with those guys back in 2004 when it was a car audio product and they uh, transitioned over to Marine Audio and I think it was 2008. And uh, they built a pretty good following with uh, their Marine Tower speakers, amplifiers, so on and so forth. Great following in the U.S. And uh, now in Canada, we're starting to kick some butt with it. So last year was awesome. So this year we've got a we've got a big task. We're going to double our business this year in 20. Big words from the sales manager himself. I like it. It's like you're about to get into the ring and you're talking smack. Um, two things I want to highlight here. You know, um, A, there is a interesting connection between Trends Electronics and Exile and the people behind Exile. like to maybe ask you about that. But also, it's funny how things come first full circle. You just mentioned, you know, you started with them in car audio. Then they kind of really carved out a path in marine audio. And in fact, they're circling back because towards the end of last year, they're, you know, introducing brand new car audio. Line. So I'd like to hear a little bit about the story between Trends and, and the folks at Exile. Uh, when I first started with Trends in 2004, um, they were just they were just launching their brand. Uh, I think they were showing at CES maybe for the first time. And, uh, you know, our, our history goes back with the Exile guys. Well, Bill Hasbrook, uh, Brian Kelsey and uh, Morgan West, basically, uh, they were back at Phoenix Gold originally. And obviously, you know, early 2000s, late 90s, we were huge in the Phoenix Gold game. So uh, when those guys split away and did their own brand and got exiled, that's where the name came from, I believe, um, we were jumped on board because we knew the guys, you know, Bill's obviously a very, very good engineer. And uh, it was a, it was a natural partnership to partner up with them again and, and make sure that, that, that they launched their brand in the right way. Um, you know, um, we parted ways a couple of years, you know, probably about 2015, I believe and uh recently got back together with them so um there's some big news coming uh, very soon we're also going to be helping widen the distribution in the us model as well so good collaboration between trends nice. and and the exile boys sounds like you guys are taking your relationship to the next level 
So yeah, we're getting we, we're married. We're gonna we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get kids next. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Uh, without further ado, I mentioned industrial design. You mentioned he's a great engineer. Let's go ahead and bring on president and director of engineering for Exile Audio, Mr. Bill Hasbrook. Hey, Bill. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I can see you. I can't hear you. No, oh, you can't hear us at all. Yeah, I can't. I can. I can see the video. I could hear the audio earlier, but I can't see you now. I can hmm. talk over it. I don't know if the stream still has audio, but oh yeah, we still got you. We still got you, and uh, we're ready to talk. I mean, you heard? You, did you hear a little intro? You know, we're talking about the in, the industrial design, and we're talking about um, you know basically the heritage that that is you know Exile Audio. Um, moving to twenty twenty two, there's some new product to talk about today. But I mean, the commitment to marine audio uh, is, is steadfast. I wonder if you heard that. You think you heard that, Grant? I don't think so. No way. Eh? Uh, no. Let's see if we can get him reconnected. That was that was the answer. Uh, the the comment I wanted from him, from Bill was on that topic. Well, their their commitment to the marine audio side. I mean, I can speak to that a bit. I mean, mm. they uh, they they what happened was back when they were doing car audio products, they saw a lot of their car audio products being used in the marine environment because back in you know '08 ish when kind of the the players for marine audio start you know, got into the game, there was no real car audio, marine audio products. It was, you know, a six and a half inch car audio speaker in a can, and they were charging a thousand bucks for it because the, the housing was aluminum and the, the housing was the most expensive part of the product. And uh, <clears throat> amplifier wise, there was no real marine grade amplifiers and stuff like that too. So a lot of guys were taking really good car audio products, putting it in the marine environment. And obviously there was a need for you know, designing the product to actually work in that environment, you know, get it marine rated. I, I think know, a lot of guys spent a lot wars. of money that, uh, you know, didn't last very long from an investment. Uh, it was the real uh, <laughs> yeah, especially if it was salt water, you know, marine, yeah. lake water is not so bad. Fresh water is pretty easy on, on mm -hmm. your gear, but uh, salt water, you can, you learn pretty quick that uh, stuff corrodes and oxidizes and gets like nasty in a heartbeat. That yeah. In a heartbeat, yeah. like it's you blink your eye and oh my god, what happened? So, Bill, one, can you hear one us? One winter, and... yeah. Bill, can you hear one, us? One winter in storage, and your 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 amplifier looks nice and brown. Yeah, no kidding. I'm just trying to get audio and make sure that Bill can hear us. Bill, we can. Uh, I know you can hear us, but I don't think we can hear you. Let's do a test here, real quick. Bill, no, he's working on it. So here's the thing with Exile Audio. You know, I I wanted. To... Ooh. With Exile Audio, the um, grade of design, I, I, I've mentioned it in the past grant. I'm going to say it again, and I can't wait to see the new stuff. We're going to get the presentation going here. But, like, it looks unique. It has its own signature look. There's a couple other brands I can think of in that category, you know, that really have that signature look that you could recognize from a boat from a far, you know, a distance away, which is kind of important, right? Um, yeah. But I find Exile has that look. It has that unique design, those design cues that really make it stand out. And I think dealers need to understand that it is a signature line. This is not one of those brands or products that will just fade away into the back of your showroom. Uh, definitely not, especially when you see what we've been working on for the last year and a bit. Um, mm -hmm coming down the pipe pretty soon but i mean obviously from a design you know from a, a cosmetic standpoint <clears throat> um you know the grill design is very with the the, the the traditional exile x on there it's all very recognizable from the front same on the back you notice that logo when you're driving down the highway you can pretty you can tell you know what the brand is pretty damn quick just at a quick glance on it so um you know keeping the you know the, the nice designs on the side of it but the uh the design of the grill and you know overall design this is a, an xm9 sorry an sxt9 but the hang height's very low as well this isn't a, a big monster that you're going to bang your heads on but uh as far as the design standpoint goes i think they've done killer on the cosmetics and uh you know we're 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 super stoked to get to the end of this to show you some sneak peek stuff so okay well let's do the first thing first let's see if we can get uh bill back online make sure we can hear him Bill, you there with us? I'm. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? We got yeah, you. We're good. Gold. Oh, all right. Technology. Golden. We, we get some audio stuff out. Yes. Perfect. Don't touch I, I, any I, buttons. Don't touch any <laughs> buttons. We're good. Um, I'm going back to that question, Bill. I really want you to comment on this before we get into the presentation. I mentioned industrial design. I mentioned the unique look, and also mix that with a little bit of the 
the pedigree that you have within the industry. And, and that makes for us a, a special formula. I'd like to hear what your comment on that is. Yeah, it's, we're in a unique position to do something we absolutely love. And as an engineer and somebody that's passionate about product design, it's really fun to be able to bring together the engineering background, making speakers that sound amazing, put together all the technology that's up to date, but also be able to wrap it in a package that looks good and is also very easy to use. Um, our products have to look good, but we also spend a lot of time doing research, doing installs in boats, installs in cars, and we know what's frustrating about putting a product in a vehicle. So we try to design that into the products when we um, start from the scratch pad all the way through to final production. So there's just little things that we, we try to think about to make them easy to use and make it a better product once it's installed. Makes a lot of sense. Well, I think this is the time. We, I think we've ruffled our feathers enough. Our appetite is wet. Let's go ahead and uh, let's dive into 2022 Exile Audio. So the, uh, right. the first product we should probably talk about is is what we're probably best known for is, is the, uh, the wakeboard tower speakers. Um, there's a quick little video here that uh, I'll just keep on loop and Bill can talk you through what you're looking at on the screen. Yeah, so this is the XM9 and SXT9, which is our tower speaker. We have two different versions of the speaker, one that has a compression horn in the center. So as you see here on screen, it illustrates our quick disconnect technology, which allows the speaker to be mounted. So here we've got, a, here's an example of the clamp. This is the clamp that would mount on the boat. So the clamp consists of two parts. One, the part on a tubular tower where you've got a clamping mechanism that clamps to your standard tube tower that you've seen in tower speakers since the beginning. What's unique about our design is this post that mounts on the bottom. This post is what allows the speaker to actually quick connect to the boat. So you can mount all of this on the boat. And then once the speaker is ready to go, you basically just push the speaker in place. And now the speaker is mounted to the boat. So now it's ready to play audio. It can play audio 360 degrees as you rotate it because the audio is passing through the center of this connector. Once you get the speaker where you want it, come around like this, and we have a cam lock mechanism here on the front. You lock that down and then this, the clamp won't be able to rotate. So it makes it very easy to use. It's also nice for the customer if they're doing a lot of towing or they during the winter time, they've got an expensive set of speakers. They can basically just take the speaker off of the boat. Um, we also sell bags that go for these that keep the speakers protected and makes them easy to carry around. So that's something that's unique to our brand is this quick disconnect. The other benefit of the quick disconnect is it allows you to have adapters. So say you're not using a tube tower. So you've got a boat with like a, a Malibu or a MB or a Mastercraft. They all have different types of mounting on them where there isn't a tube available. They're machined aluminum tower with um, flat mounting locations. So this is an example of the uh, Malibu G4 uh, MB flat. This is uh, actually an adapter that a lot of our dealers will use for mounting on pontoon boats. This is just a very nice mount that gives you kind of a football shape. And then you can mount this anywhere on the boat. And now you have your quick disconnect to be, to mount, be able to mount the speaker to. The other thing that we've done is we have the ability to do in-house uh, machining for parts so all of the move on very quickly this is for uh, Malibu G3 we call this the G3 double this allows you to mount two speakers on a Malibu G3 tower um, so that's something that's unique about our mounting mechanism is it's very flexible there's if there's a boat out there that uh, we need to be able to mount to we're able to turn very quickly and have it have a new adapter built for it uh, um, on screen there, you can see just kind of a, a diagram of why we have two speakers. We actually sell a speaker specifically for wakeboarding and then one that we call our surf speaker. A wakeboarding speaker has the um, uh, horn-driven speaker here and uh, HLCD in the center. And what that does is that gives you a lot of projection. It's able to project behind the boat, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, if you're pulling a tube and you've got them pretty far behind the boat. This horn really is coupling further away from the boat and projecting that sound. Um, if you're doing a lot of surfing or if you're just hanging out on the swim deck, we also have another version, which is called, the, it's the exact same speaker. The only difference is we swap out the horn for a uh, 
titanium tweeter in the center. And what that does is this speaker is designed more as what we call a near field speaker. So it is able to couple its sound stage very close to the driver all the way up to 15, 20 feet behind the boat. So you get a nice uh, sound stage in the closer locations. Um, another thing that's popular with our speakers is we call it a hybrid setup because the mid-ranges in both the horn and the surf version are the same mid-ranges. You can actually combine them together with one horn, one surf, and kind of be able to address both types of riding situations. And that's become a very popular setup for us, is that hybrid setup. I think for the uh, the boat dealers out, or the, the uh, dealers out there for that are maybe just new to marine audio, it's really, really important to qualify your customer <clears throat> what they're going to be using the uh, the boat for or the audio system in the boat for whether it's for a surf application or a wakeboard <clears throat> if you sell a guy a surf speaker and he's doing most of his most of his uh, boating at 80 to 100 feet back on a, on a wakeboard or a, or towing the kids uh, he's not going to be happy with a surf speaker it's not going to project far enough back likewise if the guy's going to be a surfer 90 percent of the time uh, you don't want to be melting his face at, you know, 20 feet back when this, the uh, XM9, the compression driver, is designed to be project, you know, 80 to 100 feet back. You, you may want to make sure you have, uh, you qualify your customer, whether he's a wake or a surf, or like Bill said, if he's a if he's a bit of both, then you can sell him the hybrid setup, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You get him to sell him two sets of speakers. What, what I find interesting about this offering, uh, Grant <laughs> and, and Bill, is um, there are there are other manufacturers that don't have these type of options when it comes to their tower speakers. I've seen one model, for example, that now from your explanation, there seems to be a different audience for a different purpose uh, or activity associated to um, the application. So I, I'm, I'm sensing there's a, a deep theme of application specific product, uh, not only in the sound configuration, but also in the mounting, um, very unique quick release, especially with the cam mount to, to secure the angle, but also um, the fact that there's application specific bracketry uh, for types of boats. So I want to note that that is something pretty unique that I've seen so far through these marine sessions. Yeah, so on the screen there, there should be, you know, Bill had one of the examples for the Malibu adapters up there. There's also a traditional one in the middle, which is more of like, an, we call it the X mount uh, style. And then on the right is a single set of speakers. So again, because um, our relationship is a very close partner in Portland, um, they can manufacture these very quickly and, and get them to market pretty damn quick. So that's just for the Malibu adapters. We also do them for Mastercraft, Taiga, uh, Nautique, MB, Supra. So pretty much any boat you're gonna have that cast tower application, we have an adapter for it. And if we don't, we can certainly source it and make sure we have one available for it. But that covers probably about 95% of the applications we see in the market. And uh, it's nice that we have all those. As, as some other brands will have a tower speaker, but they won't be able to mount to these types of towers. And that's where, you know, the experienced Bill and his team with the engineering side of it uh, certainly pays off having that mastery in place of, of being able to produce those parts. I think, Grant, that this is a huge tool for dealers to connect with local boat dealers that offer these products. It's a you know huge plus when you can walk in and say, hey, listen, we can help you out with your marine audio needs. And by the way, we notice you're a Supra, a TJ, whatever it is that you're a Mastercraft dealer, and we have these products that like mm -hmm. are made to fit. And that, I think, goes a long way in that conversation. Yeah, I mean, we, we see a big spike in business at the end of the traditional marine season because, you know, guys have been out in the boat all summer and, you know, they've had a few wobbly pops on the lake and maybe they've mm -hmm. turned the volume up too loud or buddy's gone in and found the gain control and i can make this thing louder <laughs> turn the knob all the way to the right and this let's get this thing going why does buddy always find the gain control knob why is that <laughs> yeah That's, yeah uh, it's 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 always found after you've had like six or seven beers too so it's or it's, bubbly yeah. pops as you call yeah, them yeah wobblies so yeah, we, yeah. we see a, we see a big spike in business from uh, boat dealerships especially when they they kind of do the winterizing and stuff over after the season um, where guys have blown speakers, blown tweeters, you know, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity for you guys to capitalize on it uh, as a shop too, that, you know, pe people get crazy on the lake and as the, uh, as the alcohol system flows, so does the volume control goes up. So. That's okay. There's a direct. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and we definitely take that into account when we design our product is we understand how it's being used and it has to be able to take the abuse. Um, this is an example. This is the uh, example of our coaxial speaker that was on screen there. Um, 
This uh, is designed to fit in both an eight inch size and a six and a half inch size. Did you guys lose me? No, we got no, you. We still go. got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my screen froze up here. Okay, I'll keep going. Um, so what we're doing is we're just trying to basically have the tools available to fill the individual holes. Um, our six and a half inch coax is fairly unique because it utilizes 130 millimeter mounting diameter, which is standard for Marine. Marine kind of in the beginning started at a, what used to be considered a true six inch speaker. And so the mounting holes in most boats have a true six inch size, not the six and a half inch size that we're used to in car audio. So when we designed this speaker specifically for Marine, we gave the basket a 130 millimeter mounting diameter, but we gave it a 165 millimeter outside diameter with a 165 millimeter cone. So we're able to get the cone area of a larger coaxial speaker, but still be able to fit in the standard uh, size hole that's in just about every boat out there that uses a six and a half inch speaker. Same thing with the eight. This is a very specific size for Marine. Um, all of your factory systems out there that are using a, an eight inch size are using this same size speaker. We were one of the first people to kind of come up with the size and luckily the market followed. So we're able to fill kind of the, the two areas that are most important for Marine, which is the six and a half and the eight inch coax. These are also designed to work infinite baffle mounted just inside of the gunnels of the boat. And they take a tremendous amount of power. We rarely ever see one of these speakers come back with either a blown tweeter or a blown mid. You're able to just pound a bunch of power into them and not have them fail. So um, again, it's kind of an example of how we design specifically for the marketplace. Yeah, and you know, on the eight inch, you know, uh, I think the expectation is that they pound, right? I mean, it's an eight inch, you know, there's not a tiny speaker. Yeah. Um, so, so absolutely. Speaking of power. <laughs> That's uh, ever elusive multi channel marine amp, Grant. Uh, it's not elusive, we got lots of them. Um, we do, that's great. Yeah, this is our this is our flagship piece, and uh, uh, one of the best sellers. Um, both we, we saw a lot in car audio application just because the subwoofer section is so powerful, which is pretty unique in a lot of multi channel amplifiers, <clears throat> especially in that form factor. It's not a physically imposing amplifier, it's not huge. Um, but this is our this is our go-to guy for most applications. This is the, this is called the Javelin. Uh, so this is 80 watts by four at four ohms, and then 800 watts RMS at two ohms on the subwoofer channel. Uh, gorgeous amplifier. It's got some real weight to it. Feels like more of a traditional class AB amplifier. Um, you know, you hand this over the counter to the guy. It's got some weight to it. You explain the power to it and the value we give on the retail side of this pricing wise is pretty much unmatched. I mean, Bill, Bill can talk about all the feature side on it, but it's, you know, physically good looking, old school looking amplifier, but delivers on sheer raw power, which is what you really want to do on the, on the Marine side is overcome all that uh, water noise. You've got the, the engine, no the, the noise of the engine, you've got kids screaming, you've got women screaming, you've got guys screaming after six or seven beers. You know, <laughs> maybe on your uh, boat, Grant. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not on a boat that doesn't have alcohol, you're on, you're on a loser boat. <laughs> oh man, you said you heard it here first. Um, yeah, let's let's hear a little bit about the the features there with the amplifier from uh, from Bill. Yeah, so the um, kind of our our go to lineup for a boat is basically the Javelin, which the Javelin is a five channel amplifier. This is what's going to power your cabin speakers and your subwoofer. So this has four channels for Usually how it works is you've got, most boats have three pairs, sometimes four pair of coaxials. You'll have usually two pair in the back of the boat in the cabin, one pair up in the bow. So the Javelin works amazing for that. It's able to run two ohm stereo all day long. So the back two speakers, you just um, put them together in parallel to get a two ohm load off the back two channels of this, a four ohm load, or if you have two pair up front, a two ohm load on the bow speakers. And then um, the amplifier can go all day long, not get hot running those loads. And then he, uh, Grant talked about the subwoofer output. This is up to 800 watts, which you absolutely need in a boat. It's not only about playing loud, it's also about having dynamic range. When you're in that outdoor environment, you need a tremendous amount of dynamic range just to get that mid bass popping and make the system dyna sound dynamic and be fun to listen to. So power kind of rules in that area, but also with power comes, um, a, comes a lot of problems of you're kind of giving your customer some rope to hang themselves. So we've tried to design some things into our systems to where we know our systems have a tremendous amount of power, but we're trying to set them up to where 
there's um, less likely that the customer is going to go out, have a couple of beers and get in there and play with the game controls and break things. One thing we've done on our, our tower amplifier, this is the 30.2. This is a dedicated power amp. It's designed specifically to drive power speakers. It makes it a lot of power, a lot of dynamic range. What's different about this amp than a traditional tower speaker is this amp is high pass only. Because these have so much power, we were uh, a couple of years ago, um, four or five years ago, we were starting to see a lot of power speakers come back with not thermally blown mid-range drivers. We were physically seeing voice coils being pulled off of the cone because of just simple mechanical over being mechanically overdriven by too much power. What was happening is uh, the dealer would set this up, send it out in the field and, you know, buddy would get in the boat and think he knows more about stereo than anybody else. And he would turn it from high pass mode to full range mode. Mm. And you're driving that 300 Watts into a mid range all the way down to 20 Hertz. These speakers are not, are designed to give you a tremendous amount of mid bass. They're not really designed to go lower than about 70 Hertz because we've really optimized them to give you mid bass in an open air environment. So what we did on the XM 30.2 is we made it a high pass only amplifier. So no matter what you do, you cannot play this amp lower than 60 Hertz. Um, so it comes from the factory in that position. Um, we prefer power speakers are kind of crossed over in that 70 to 80 Hertz region, just to kind of min minimize cone movement. Um, but this is, is a tool that can help you do an install. It just doesn't give the customer the ability to get in there and mess around with the gain settings uh, on that. All of the amplifiers have covers over the gains. So once you set them, obviously somebody could get in and take the cover off. But it is just that one extra thing you can do to keep people from playing with the gain setups. One more thing that's unique about this amp that's different than most amplifiers on the market is all of our XM series amps have both a single ended input and they also have the ability to do a differential input. Um, on the end panel, there's a button that says differential on or off. If you turn differential off, that's your standard 90% uh, of the installs out there where the RCA shield has got reference to ground. And um, that's how most boats are, how most boats operate. There are a few boats out there and it's becoming more common with OEM integration to have a differential or what some people call a balanced output from the head unit. The problem is if you take a balanced output from a head unit, try to drive it into a single ended RCA input, you're shorting one half of the output of the head unit and you'll end up uh, eventually turning the head unit off. We've had a lot of uh, installs out there um, where differential wasn't turned on in a differential system and the head unit basically is going to protect and turn itself off. By putting the amp into differential mode, it floats that RCA on the ground setting, on the ground shield, and allows the head unit basically to just play all day long. So that's something that helps us interface with some of these more modern OEM systems. A lot of safety features uh, integrated in. Again, safety for both to, the speaker and, and for the amp, both. Yeah, we, we try to, we, we do a lot of installs here just from a research standpoint, and we spend a lot of time with dealers and out on the water, and we kind of see how this stuff is used. So we try to put features in there that not only help the end consumer, but also helps the dealers and the installers to sell systems that go out and don't come back. Because it's not in our benefit to have a system that either fails out in the, uh, out in the marketplace or um, actually has installation problems. So uh, we don't want our systems coming back. They need to be out there playing because most of our sales come from one person hearing a boat with an exile system and going to a dealer and saying, I want my boat to be sound just like that or even louder. So there's also mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. competitive. And, and, and let's not forget, you know, a service call on the, uh, on this type of vehicle. You, that's not coming Very to your cool. shop. You got to go to it. Most and that, ser exactly. that service call happens on the weekend, not yeah. during the week. <laughs> exactly. With yeah. a very irate customer that invited all his friends over. Yeah. To have this. yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. We want reliability. So I think those safety features are definitely appreciated. Yeah, and then just to round out the uh, the XM series of amplifiers, we have a, a matching four-channel amplifier, the XM154, and then a uh, daintily powered 1,200-watt monoblock, uh, the XM1200.1. So... <clears throat> Nice little lineup of amplifiers. Uh, we are going to expand on that um, maybe a little bit later. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, beef. So this is our XI-12D. This has been in our lineup. It's been refined over the last 10 years. It's one of those products that um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, we've just kind of upgraded over the years by uh, – adding a grill to it, changing the cosmetics here and there. Some, um, I think we went to a, uh, 
a higher temperature conformal on the voice coil, just small little tweaks like that. Um, this is one of those products that goes out and just doesn't come back. Uh, 12 inch subwoofers are tough, especially when you've got 800 watts going to them. Um, that's a that's a category that you can see a lot of failures when people are trying to get more out of the woofer than it can than it can take. So the XI-12 is one of those kind of unicorn woofers that really can kind of take everything you throw at it. Um, it works great in a sealed box, works fantastic in a vented enclosure. It's not really designed for infinite baffle. I'm not telling you that people haven't used it out there for that. It's not really what it was designed for. But um, even if you're installing a system where the bo box isn't absolutely perfect, if you're trying to re-put it into an OEM box, this is a woofer that kind of will work anywhere and very, very low failure rate. So um, in our lineup right now for Marine, we only make a 12-inch subwoofer. Um, we, we stopped making our 10 a couple of years ago just because a 10 in an open-air boat environment is not really a subwoofer. It's more like a mid-base driver. It's not like car where you get cabin gain and you've got that nice, a 10 in a car works great. A 10 in a boat just is not a subwoofer. So we pretty much just do a 12 right now in Marine. Um, we are working on some new technology next year to where we're, we're going to have um, some other 12-inch offerings. We're also going to have some 10-inch offerings, but they're going to have some technology that allows them to work in a marine environment, mainly for systems that already have a 10-inch subwoofer in them, and you want to upgrade the customer. We're working on some 10s that you can put into factory locations and actually have them work like a subwoofer. So um, we think we found a way to do that. So that will be coming uh, in the next year. What was the power handling on that sub, Bill? Um, it's rated at 600 all day long. Uh, we routinely put 800 on it off the backside of the uh, Javelin, and it never it never has a problem. I mean, I've seen at, a lot of people 600. Use even more even more even more power than that. But uh, in, from an yeah, 600 RMS. It's, it's very at 600 uh, RMS. You know why they don't use it free air? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, that is the problem with marine is you know, a lot of people will put these in a free air enclosure because that's what's in the boat. So that's why we're a little conservative with some of the power numbers because you're not always sure how it's going to be used. Gotcha. Oh, the ZLD. So the ZLD is one of those tools that when you first hear about it, you're like, I don't really know why you need this. But this is so something cool. we designed. bringing me back like 92 vibes right now. I know. The, the problem is you look at this and it looks like a quarter din right? Sparkamichi 2000 watt EQ yes. that you bought at the auto parts store. Yeah. Um, this is a quarter din size, but it's not a quarter din EQ like you're, nor like you're used to saying. This is what we actually call our zone, our zone line driver. Um, this is designed to actually be kind of the master control for the system. When you're running a boat, it's different than a car because you have three different active zones that you constantly have to adjust. Um, and the most frustrating thing is to have to go into a head unit, push a bunch of buttons, play with your fader, play with your subwoofer. That's something that in the real world just doesn't work. What the zone line driver does is it allows you to put all of the power at the helm. I don't mean just power from the ease of use. I also mean power because this can do up to 12 volts of output. So you're also getting a tremendous amount of driving voltage from the head unit, um, which allows you to get those signal to noise ratios much higher in a boat. Boats are very noisy environment. The higher you can drive it at the front, you can have the gains on the amplifier all the way down. So any noise that we're going to get into the system, it's going to be at such a low part of the noise floor that you're never going to hear it. The best part about this product here is the master volume control. Um, this is an aluminum knob, analog, master volume that controls all zones simultaneously. You mount this underneath the helm and you have immediate ability to turn the system up and down as fast as you'd like. There's also separate zones for the tower, the cabin, and the subwoofer. So you're able to adjust on the fly your tower volume. A lot of times when people aren't riding, they'll turn their towers down so that you're just listening to uh, the sound inside of the boat. And then when somebody's riding, you'll turn the tower of the uh, volume of the tower speakers all the way up. We also have a, a separate control for cabins. Sometimes if uh, the kids out are out in the tube or out uh, wakeboarding out back and they want it really loud, but you're just kind of got a headache and want a little bit quieter inside of the boat, you can turn the cabin speakers down. So you're now spitting most of the sound behind the boat and you have a little bit more of a quiet area inside of the boat. The other great thing about this is having an infinite amount of subwoofer control right at the helm. 
every song is a little bit different. Uh, you listen to classic rock, it has a lot less bass in it than, than modern songs do. So depending on the music you're listening to, older songs, you're going to have to turn that bass up even louder. Modern songs, you can turn the bass down. So having a bass control at the helm that's an analog physical knob you can turn just allows you to tune your system for the different songs. Um, next to it is also the subwoofer low pass filter. We've given this right here on the master controls. Again, all uh, different songs have different styles of bass and this allows you to um, adjust the low pass filter. Sometimes even with classic rock, you wanna turn that crossover frequency up a little bit to get a little bit more mid bass out of it. The other thing we found in boats is your crossover frequencies can be much higher than in a car because localization of the subwoofer is not as big of a deal. Usually the subwoofer is right up under the helm where it's just part of the sound stage. It's very common to be able to cross these subwoofers over at 90, 100, up to sometimes 120 hertz just to get that added mid bass for different songs. And then if you play a modern song to where that you're really able to localize that bass and it's getting a little bit kind of beamy on you, you just pull that crossover frequency down a little bit and get that woofer to blend. Um, this also has an aux input. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll take the factory's uh, head unit, a lot of the factory now touch screens um, they have audio output a lot of people want to keep some interface with their boat so you can bring that into the main input of the uh, zld and then we also have an aux input very popular setup is um, on the aux input they'll put one of our bluetooth adapters mm. either the standalone bluetooth or our media center bluetooth so that you've got kind of the best of both worlds if you want to drive it direct with one of our bluetooths you get the, the best sound quality the best dynamic range and then you still have the option of bringing the factory system in through the uh, main input. And then there's just a switch here to be able to quickly go back and forth. There's also four EQ settings on here. Um, most of our system is designed to work with each other. Uh, you don't really need much equalization, if any, to make our system sound the way we want. The only knob that I do recommend uh, some of our customers I talked to them about using is this um, mid-range knob. It's at two and a half kilo. Mm -hmm. It's at uh, two and a half kilohertz, 2,500 hertz. This, instead of being a boost, what I found is sometimes if somebody has four horn speakers on their boat and it just is a bit much when you're surfing yeah. or a bit much when you're kind of hanging out on the swim deck. And it that turns down the harsh, level. the harsh yeah, level. Yeah, so yes. you can take this two and a half K and this is what I tell a lot of our customers is if you want the, if you want the horn driver, you want the wakeboard speaker because you think that's what you're going to want to do, but you're worried about just kind of hanging out and listening to music. This two and a half K, if you turn it down, that's the region where that horn is really loading. And if you pull some of the energy out of that horn at two and a half K, usually bring it down to like the nine to 10 o'clock position, that will pull a lot of power out of that horn and just kind of keep it from loading. And it, it allows you to kind of hang out on the swim deck with your towers playing loud and have it not rip off. So um, there's a lot of tools in this little toolbox right here that, uh, We've, we've had a lot of success with it. It's going to be on our line for a really long time. And everybody that uses it, uh, they get a new boat. And the first thing they say they have to have is a ZLD. Because once you've had one, it's hard to go back. Again, it's uh, another unique item, I feel, in the in the Exile lineup. Uh, Grant, did you have one? I wanted to maybe zoom in on that just to show the front face of that as well as the back. I know he's got a good shot. If you, let's get him on full screen there. There you go. Y you know what? It, okay, fine. It's a little bit more modern looking than the old school what I was thinking about, that's for sure, with that machine face, you know. Um, but come on, it is a little bit, right, 90-centric there with that. I, I remember playing with mine all the time. I Actually, I had an audio control one. Sorry, that's the one I had was the audio oh. control one. But no, having the um, physical button for sure. And, and again, I think we talked about this on another session, Grant. There's a lot to be said about physical buttons when you're in rough water, bumping around. Yeah, and just the fit and finish of this, like when you feel these buttons, it's got, you know, they feel really nice. It doesn't feel flimsy like anything's mm -hmm. going to fall off when you turn the knobs. They're very, very good quality units. Even the, uh, the RCA button. connectors yeah. on the back, they're using uh, Tiffany style connectors on the back. Mm. It's not a it's high you know, end off the shelf. Yeah, it's high end, man. We don't yeah. do low end. <laughs> yeah, you have to use those connectors in a boat because those there's a lot of weight on those RCAs. And as that boat's pounding yeah. around, you get a lot of force on those RCA connectors. So you'll notice that all of our marine stuff has um, the Tiffany connectors on the front of the amplifiers and the EQ just so that it can take that physical abuse as that RCA is kind of pulling on it. And it's mm -hmm. not going to rip it off the PCB board. Very cool. Okay, let's keep her going. 
I just wanted to show a slide of some some of the unique things that we have that maybe some other brands don't have, especially on the uh, the Malibu adapters. There, Bill, you can talk about the different versions we have of those. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of times it's becoming more and more difficult to. I mean, same with cars; boats are going in the same direction that vehicles have gone with OEM integration. So we tried to get on top of it early when we when we see a new boat that's come out with some new electronics that doesn't have an RCA output because you kind of need an RCA output to be able to interface with most aftermarket uh, amplifiers. Um, we try to get in and make an adapter for it. So what you see on screen there, that's a Malibu adapter that allows you to adapt from the Malibu factory system. There's a tower output that's on a proprietary connector. We build an adapter that you can plug into that connector that gives you standard output plus remote turn on. We also do one for Malibu, which is a um, cabin adapter. That cabin adapter will give you uh, front and rear cabin and also gives you a subwoofer output. So there's three sets of RCAs that come out of the cabin adapter, and that also gives you an RCA turn on. That, um, we that's got to be an industry unique piece, Bill, is it not? It is. And we've uh, and we build them here in house. We, we make them to order, and it's one of those things that we're able to jump on it really quickly because um, we have a lot of uh, loyal customers that are also loyal to Malibu, and they would get new boats every couple of years. And they, kept, I don't know, I think they started this adapter four or five years ago, and they're like, oh my God, I've got this boat, but there's no way to put your stereo system in it. And so we got in there very quickly, figured out how to adapt our, our product to it. And then we've just kept it in our lineup. And it's, it's, I'm surprised how many of those we sell because you can't really do an aftermarket system without an adapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the socks I put in there, cause it's one of the, uh, one of the accessories we sell a ton of with the tower speakers. <clears throat> we used to include them in the box, but uh, we thought why not let customer, you know, retailers make some money on them too. So uh, now it's an accessory that you can add on to every sale. Perfect for like Bill was talking at the beginning. If you're towing the boat, any long distances, you, put them in the bag you're not going to scratch up the finish on well, the outside especially with the way how easy it is to remove you know the tower speakers from the bracket uh, you know it's, it's like a removable faceplate for a source and i take that off all the time yeah, that super be convenient oh, easy to have it you know, store on the boat or if you're leaving the boat on the lake overnight you can store these in the cabin or the back of the truck what's the big then, ball <clears throat> that's that's the buoy ball oh it's a buoy ball <laughs> buoy ball Oh, yes, gotcha. that's been a, it's been one of those products that uh, I, I think it was eight years ago, maybe longer, that we we're seeing a lot of our customers that were going to Toys R Us, which doesn't exist anymore, but they go there and they would buy the- Oh, it does in know, Canada, so, Bill. Yeah, you still have them. Yeah, Toys R Us strong, strong in Canada still, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and they were buying these hippity hop balls and they're using them for tie-ups. You put two of these between your boats when you're doing a big tie-up and everybody's got their stereo playing mm -hmm. loud. And it, it keeps the boats from touching and it does it's one of the best um buoys on the market for actually keep it as the boats are flexing that buoy ball just kind of stretches with it so we actually went and found the manufacturer that builds those hippie hop balls and then we started selling them with our logo on it because it's um a lot of our customers they own uh, how they own houses on the lake on the river or just out when they're having a good time in a big tie up um it was just kind of fun to have those kind of lined up on a dock with our logo on it and it definitely it's definitely our marketplace it's not an audio product but it really has brought you know a lot of new customers to us and a lot of brand recognition just by having this silly buoy ball um so we've kept it in our lineup every time we do them a new production run we usually throw a different logo on um so we've got people that you know every year will buy the the latest and greatest because they want to keep their collection going of having every version of the buoy ball oh my god it's, it's a like silly pokemon. product but it's, it's like so needed when you're out in a tie-up um it's so needed to just make sure that your expensive boat's not slamming up against another one yeah that must be the the bluetooth adapter <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. This is the, uh, we're, we're going to start getting into some new products now so this is actually in production now um i'm not sure when we're actually going to get them but they should be fairly quick i would probably say in the next 30 days possibly mm -hmm. yeah they're going to be <laughs> shipping here um they'll be off production in about a week and a half and we'll probably have them by probably by the end of the month we'll have those here because we're going to airship them in literally the um, this easiest is way five yeah, this is our BT5. It's replacing our BT4, which is one of our most successful products. Um, BT4 is basically just power ground um, and RCA output. Uh, this new BT5 has a couple of new features. Um, the new BT5 goes to a four volt 
uh, RMS output. So you have a tremendous amount of voltage at the front end. Um, what this is mainly used for is a head unit replacement. Uh, a lot of people now, you know, especially older boats that just have an old marine stereo in it with a CD player, they just want to modernize, but they don't really need a big giant head unit in their system. All they ever do is play music from their boat. So this allows you to basically get high quality um, studio grade sound from your phone into through a Bluetooth adapter out to RCA with about four volts of output. So this can truly replace a head unit. The new version goes to a more traditional wiring setup, more like a head unit where you have your constant power, your accessory power and your and your um, ground, obviously. And then it also has a remote output on it. We have a lot of times we'll see these older boats. They don't have a separate switch for an accessory or for the stereo. And if you have an old head unit, a lot of times people will keep their old head unit around just to turn the uh, remote turn on to the amplifier. They use that as the, uh, the on off switch for the boat. So what we've done with this is we've given it a remote output so that you can install this in a system and that can be your complete head unit. It either goes straight to the amps or it can go to a ZLD. And um, how the remote works is when the, re when the Bluetooth adapter hears audio being played, it immediately mm. sends a remote turn on signal to the amplifier. Once audio is stopped streaming to the adapter, it waits for one minute. If it doesn't see additional audio being played within that one minute period, it will turn the remote turn on off. So you don't have to worry about the system being uh, draining your batteries and staying on nice, all the time. Nice, nice. Yeah, and that's important and in Marine. Paired, you, yeah. Once you start playing music again, you can stay paired the entire time. But once you start playing music again, immediately it turns the remote turn on back on. So it's it's a unique product that we you know is really used as a head a uh, head unit replacement. And it's uh, from a sound quality standpoint in an open air environment, you can't hear the difference between that and being directly connected with an RCA cable. There, it's really a fantastic piece. All right. Yeah, the remote turn on is definitely the game changer of that little piece. Sure. Yes. So a couple of things that are uh, coming new on the amplifier side. Um, we have a line of amplifiers on the car audio product called Shift. <clears throat> and there's five different models available. And we're going to introduce two new models specifically for Marine. Um, and there'll be a two channel. Oh, sorry. I'm ahead of myself here. <clears throat> so there's going to be a two channel, which is 200 watts by two and a five channel amplifier which we're calling a baby javelin because it's not as much power in the subwoofer channel as the big javelin but baby but um it's 500 watts in the sub instead of 800 <clears throat> but there'll be two amplifiers in the shift marine series and i think bill's actually got one of the pre-production these are the same here. chassis as the as the car audio ones though right yeah chassis same chassis is same okay. chassis yes. so if you want to use that two channel amp in a car audio application you certainly could but that's actually the the SM 20.2 right there. So it's not a, yeah. it's so not a unicorn. Is, yeah, this is not a replacement for the 30.2. Um, so this is the 30.2, our go-to tower amplifier for the XM series. This is the uh, 20.2, which will be part of our shift marine. You can see it changes to kind of a blue shift uh, logo here on the front. And so this allows you to just have two different price points. Um, one of the new products that we'll show you is a, a, a seven inch tower speaker that is, you know, more of a, an affordable entry level into our product line. This allows you to have an amplifier, a dedicated power amplifier to be able to drive those speakers. Is that high pass only? This, this one is not high pass only. Okay. This one, because we think it will have more uses. Um, we did make this both high pass, low pass, and full range. It has some more type of features on it because it is such a good price point. We think that some people might want to use these in car. Um, there's not a lot of big two channels available for car audio these days. It's kind of a product that doesn't exist in car anymore. Um, and we're not planning on doing the large two channel in our car audio lineup. So we wanted to give this kind of what we call a hybrid setup of where it could either be used for car or it could be used for marine. And we say it's a marine amplifier. What we mean is all of the connections have gone to all stainless steel. Um, the bottom plate is all marinized. The, the circuit board is conformal coated. All of the switches go to a, uh, a marine grade switch. Um, all of the things that we've learned over the years is what makes a product reliable in a marine environment we put into this product. But we're not making it high pass only just because we do think there's applications, especially with you know these high-end component sets that are out today are becoming 
somewhat affordable. You can get a nice set of components for an affordable price. And there's just not a lot of big two channels to be able to push them. So that's why we gave this a little bit more flexibility than what we do on our dedicated 100% power amplifier. Okay. More sneak peek stuff, Bill. Oh, let's bring it back. Let's full screen that. There we go. <laughs> yes. This I've never seen. What is this? Yeah. This is um, a new product line that we're working on. Um, it will eventually replace XM. It's going to be called XMP. It's basically everything we learned on XM um, and some new things that we wanted to do to kind of just raise the bar, add some new technology to it, address some problems that we've seen in the marketplace with how do you fit these amplifiers in a boat? It gets very difficult. If you have one amplifier, sometimes you need two amplifiers. If you want to go to three pair or four pair of power speakers, um, so we're putting some ease of installation uh, technology into the amplifiers just to make them easier to work on, especially once you've got them installed. It's going to be much easier to get in and tune them. Um, a lot of times you'll mount this amplifier to where it's up against the bulkhead and you can't get to any of the adjustments. So we're making some flexibility um, improvements on that. And then from a cosmetic standpoint, we're just kind of bringing it up to what we call in our Exile 2.0 design language which you've seen some here on shift it has the illuminated badge on the top that really has an elegant look but also gives you more of that kind of led blink factor that people are looking for today um still a lot of the same technology it's just that we've added some new flavor to it and um just updated same, same type of same type of power uh, setups yes very similar power um some have a little more um they're, they're all about equal power some of them uh, have a little bit more dynamic power available. Yeah, we're going to have an upgraded Javelin amplifier, an, uh, an upgraded 30.2 amplifier. We're also going to have a six-channel amplifier that will be 150 by 6 RMS uh, or 450 by 3 bridged. Uh, a 1,200-watt monoblock. Was it 1,500 watts? Did we go 1,500 on the mono? I think we have 1,500 on that it's, line. It's, it's, it's over 1,000. Um and there'll be a four channel amplifier eventually as well to match up with it. So, so that's basically going to be the new cosmetic look moving forward for the high level uh, amplifiers. Yeah. Some cool yeah. stuff they've done too. The, uh, the, all the uh, gain controls are going to be on the top. Uh, there'll be a removable panel on the top. Mm -hmm. The uh, gain controls will be underneath there. Uh, the amps will also be stackable. There'll be a stackable kit for these so you can layer them on top of each other and still have access to the gain controls, which, uh, once we have that one, both amplifiers done, we'll, we'll, we'll introduce that. Um, the heat, the end cap that you see on there uh, is also spaced up about an extra half an inch off the bottom of the amplifier. So if you want to tuck all your wiring underneath the amp. Underneath it, yeah. Uh, super simple stuff, but, it, 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 you know, with the uh, with the Marine guys and Bill's knowledge of uh, a lot of the installs that are being done up there, um, tucking the wire underneath the amplifier is also is very common in the marine application so mm -hmm. it totally is. Uh, are there any more slides in on that presentation uh, yeah there's a couple more um just that's just a little look of the uh the top panel removed on the uh, the javelin amplifier so you can see it's you know easy access to those some other things we've done as well as the power and ground we'll have a red and a white um highlighted area on it. so when you again if you're in a poorly lit situation and underneath the dash of a boat mm -hmm. Uh, you can easily identify which one is the positive or negative when you're hooking it all up. Should also be using marine grade wire with the right color, but anyhow, that's a absolutely that's 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 something else coming down the road. Oh, okay. Uh, Wait, so you know just people as, that make wire? Yeah, we might know someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that Bill was talking about the the seven inch uh, tower speaker. We're going to be out. This is in production yeah. as well, so we should have this uh, fairly soon as well. I'm hoping. It's like a baby version. It's like a baby. It's a baby. Version. Yeah, so it's guys that want to, we made this to get, uh, you know, not everyone's into the $1,500, $2,000 retail price range for mm -hmm. tower speakers. Uh, so we got something that's a lot more affordable. These will probably come in around the $800 retail range. Wouldn't these be uh, good for a power sport application too, Grant? Yeah, power sports, uh, boats, obviously. Um, you know, guys are putting speakers in the trucks, you know, with the beds of their trucks these yes. days when they're tailgating and stuff. So. Um, this will be this will be out. These are in production now, and again, a perfect marriage for that little SM twenty point two amplifier uh, for a perfectly perfect match system. And then um, this will be this is a rendering of the brand new design we're doing on our wakeboard tower speakers. So really nice cosmetics we're getting with the uh, the lighting fad. These will have full RGB lighting built into them as well. 
uh, pretty unique design. This rib on the side won't be exposed like that. There's little inserts that you can get. Uh, we've toyed around with some ideas where you can make that a gator step insert. Uh, you can maybe make it a colored insert. So if you say you've got a white and a black boat, you can have a white insert here if you like. Mm -hmm. So a lot of cool things you can do with these new tower speakers. And again, we're going to have these both in a wake and a surf option uh, and also a white option on the... Um, the wake version as well so white and black and uh so pretty pretty cool stuff we're excited to see these when they finally arrive bill's actually got had a uh, pre-production samples in there uh, the lighting looks pretty damn badass so uh, lights up pretty nice so good glow good bling uh we're excited to get these in the go as well so just add more to the mix of the family so, so this is an add-on to the series not a replacement It'll be a replacement eventually for okay. the existing lineup. Uh, we've also got plans for something above this down the road as well. Uh, but there'll also be a fully matching series of in-boat coaxials, coaxials to go with that to match design. the cosmetics of mm -hmm. these as well. So excited for that! Just want to show you a sneak peek of. Uh, oh, we what's love sneak peeks. On those. Yeah. Hey, just real quick, uh, what is the warranty <clears throat> for all the marine products for Exile? Uh, if it's installed by an authorized dealer, we're doing two years. If it's done by an end user, uh, or maybe the guy bought it somewhere else and you, just, you guys are just installing for him, that's uh, one year. But two years if it's installed by an authorized dealer. Very nice. Two years, eh? Very, very cool. Uh, sorry, can we go back to that last slide? I think, yeah, I just wanted to see that. Nice design on the tweeter. Nope, not that one. Go yeah. forward one. On oh, this one here. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to see on this one. This is actually a compression horn speaker, so it doesn't have that design element on the, uh, the coaxial. It's slick. got the Exile. No design mm -hmm. elements that Bill and his team have put together. Sean's done some pretty unique stuff with his uh, design. Very nice. So, yeah, so new products will have uh, an entry-level tower speaker, uh, an amplifier to match with it, a, uh, a new line of uh, surf and wakeboard tower speakers, uh, six-inch uh, coaxial speakers in white or black, it's, it's like a whole new catalog. Brand new series of XMP amplifiers, which I'm super – Timelines, Grant. Timelines. What are we talking about? Dealers will, will want to know. I, Next I, I week. Wouldn't... Really? Timelines time, time in this day and age, <laughs> man? Are you kidding me? Oh, are, are we talking like, <laughs> you know, this year or is this something for next season? No, it'll, it'll likely be this year. I mean, I mean I'm not sure exactly what the timeline is going to be. Uh, we could we could have stuff made and ready, but we can't get it on a boat. So Yeah, that, that uh, is a challenge. Yeah. It's, it's always going to be a challenge. The the X, the SXT7s, they're in production. Uh, again, hopefully we'll probably have those in 30 to 45 days. Fingers crossed. Uh, the amplifier that goes with that, again, should be in around the same timeline. As far as the bigger towers, stuff like that, probably closer to the end of the season, realistically. So, Fair enough. It's a, it's a little spread. All right. Yep. All right. Let's bring this all back on the screen. I uh, just want to summarize with a couple key points that um, I want dealers to really hone in on is, number one, the industrial design. Number two, a couple of the unique features, especially in that clamp. I think that's a really, really nifty design of how you could um, adjust and remove um, your investment, really, that's what it's all about. Um, install tech, install tech guys love these things yeah. because it's a it's it's a very simple one man operation. You don't need three guys on the boat mounting your tower yeah. speakers. You and can mount the last thing you want is a tower speaker to hit you on the head because they're not light. Those are like, you know, heavy things. And those clamps and the way it attaches look robust. It, 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 there's a sense of confidence there. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Shout out to that half din unit. I think that's super unique and cool. Um, absolutely. <laughs> the the application specific type bracketry and the wiring harnesses, I want to take note of. Um, you know, again, when you have those options from an installation standpoint, we know in the car audio world, you go for it, right? Why try to splice and figure it out when somebody's already done the hard work? Just order the part and click it in, right? It's like a T harness. So absolutely cool. Hope to see maybe more of those, uh, Bill, for more popular applications. That could be interesting. That's my comment there. Definitely. We've got, we've got some we're working on for other applications. At mm -hmm. the moment. It's done a world of difference in the remote start world. Right? Oh, I bet. Yeah. So, well, if, you, if you don't have those adapters and, and you need them, it's like having, you know, not being in a gunfight, not having a gun. You know, literally, just... literally quite, quite, <laughs> yes, quite true. Um, and real congrats on, on where you're the progress on the new product. It looks up to date 2022 and, and beyond um, going along oh, with the, theme of the, the design mm -hmm. and, I, I can't wait to hear the feedback from dealers on the install and the sounds. That, that's the only thing left. Get them in the dealer's hands and see how they sound. So um, 
I think I wrapped it up there, Grant. Anything else you'd like to say to Bill? Just keep doing what you're doing, buddy. You're you're doing yeah. you're killing it. And, it's hard uh, to I'm take you away from the lab. <laughs> he, he is hard well, to get away from the lab. We love what we do, so it's it's easy. It's fun yeah. to be able to to put some of these ideas we've had for years into good use. So it's really fun to be able to kind of revamp and and build some things into the product that we've always wanted to do. And that's where we're at right now. Is kind of the best of the greatest hits of all the things that we've learned over the last eight, 10 years of doing Marine. Perfect. Um, on that note, I want to thank you, sir, uh, Bill, for, for, you know, spending some time with us today, mm -hmm. giving all your insight and uh, don't stop, get back into the lab and we'll talk to you soon. I'm going right now. <laughs> Take care, Bill. See you, Bill. Perfect. Thanks everybody. Lots of brain power there, Grant. Like I said, you know, those little design cues, it takes experience and, and engineering to put that all together into a product that makes sense once it's done. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys that eats, leaves, breathes it because this, this guy doesn't sleep either. He's one of those night owl guys. He's, you know, he, he wakes up at 12 mm -hmm. and gets a second wind and he's, he's going until two in the morning with his, all these different ideas he's got. So, so cool awesome. team to work with. Now, this team certainly is a team, and you kind of hinted at that in the beginning of the of the, of the show. You know, trends, exile, married at the hip, moving forward. Absolutely, man. And uh, like I said, big things coming for the U.S. market as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you're a U.S. dealer, um, you'll be hearing from us shortly. Absolutely. We're going to get you back to talk about Exile Audio once we get into the car audio sessions. But I mean, if you guys are looking at Marine, there's the digits down below. Get a hold of Grant's team at Trends Electronics and get you some Exile Marine Audio. Grant, it's been a blast. Thank you for Thanks, coming ben. on. We'll Always a soon. pleasure, my friend. Thanks for having us on. Take care. And there you have it, everybody. That was Exile Audio. Shout out to Mr. Bill Hasbrook, who is, uh, took the time to spend with us today. Uh, lots of new goodies on the horizon for Exile Marine Audio products. All right. While I got you, I want to remind you to continue watching because we are continuing on the path of the Marine Audio Sessions right through till Wednesday, April 6th. Those are the great brands that have all partaken in this event. Um, we're wrapping it up this Wednesday. Uh, where we will introduce our very next session, which will be Power Sports. So two more days of audio, and then we're going to jump into Power Sports. There you go. Um, make sure you check out our website, cmanetworks.com. Totally revamped, guys. I know I say it every day, but you got to go there, check it out. Find out all the training sessions from your favorite brands, maybe from your favorite distributor, maybe for your favorite category, and even from your favorite trainer. Search it all up. Lots, hundreds of videos for you to go through. That's it. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last What? <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?